Hey everyone, I am Babu Khandalwal and I welcome you all to yet another exciting video from Simply Learn. In this session, we will be discussing C Sharp design pattern. However, before we begin this session, make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and clicked on the bell icon below, so you never miss an update from Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Let's look at the agenda for today's topic. We shall begin our session with an introduction to C Sharp design. Then we will discuss types of design patterns. First, we will discuss the creational design pattern. Then we will have a look at the structural design pattern. And then at last, we will have a brief discussion about behavioral design pattern. Finally, we will conclude this session with some advantages of design pattern. So without any further ado, let's get started with what is design pattern. Design patterns are reusable solution to typical software design issues that arise frequently in real world application development. Patterns are employed by developers to tackle challenges in their individual designs. Understanding design patterns is more important than memorizing their classes, methods and attributes. Individual needs and difficulties influence pattern selection and uses among numerous design patterns now let's discuss types of design pattern there are three types of design patterns available creational design pattern structural design pattern and behavioral design pattern let's start up with creational design pattern the creational design patterns deal with object creation and initialization the creational design pattern gives the programmer more flexibility in deciding which objects need to be created for, give, for a given case. We have five types of design patterns in this. Abstract factory, builder, factory method, prototype, and singleton. Let's discuss each of them in detail. First up, abstract factory. The abstract factory design pattern allows you to create families of linked items without having to declare their classes. Next up, Builder Pattern. Builder is a design pattern that allows you to build complicated objects in stages. This pattern enables you to create many types of representations of an object while using the same creation code. Next up, Factory Method. A factory method is a creational design pattern that provides an interface for creating objects in superclass while allowing subclasses to choose the type of object created. Next up, Prototype. Prototype pattern is a design pattern that allows you to imitate existing objects without making your code land on their classes. The prototype patterns provides a basic interface for working with all objects that permits cloning to the client code. At last, Singleton. The Singleton pattern ensures that a class has only one instance while also giving a global access point to that instance. Next up, let's discuss the structural design pattern. The structural design pattern is basically used to manage the structure of classes and interfaces, as well as manage the relationship between the classes. We have seven types of design patterns in this. Adapter, Bridge, Composite Pattern, Decorator Pattern, Facet Pattern, Flyweight Pattern, and Proxy Pattern. Let's discuss each of them in detail. First up, Adapter. The Adapter Design Pattern is a structural design pattern that allows items with conflicting interfaces to work with one another. We use this pattern to reuse many existing sub subclasses that lacks common functionality that cannot be added to the superclass. Next up, Bridge. Bridge pattern is a structural design pattern that allows you to split a large class or a collection of related classes into two independent hierarchies, abstraction and implementation. Next, Composite pattern. Composite is a structural design pattern that enables you to organize parts into three structures and manipulate them independently of one another. 
the composite pattern provides two basic element kinds with a shared interface simple leaves and complex containers after that decorator Decorator is a structural design pattern that allows objects by wrapping them in special wrapper object. This pattern uses the decorator technique to add extra behaviors to objects without disrupting the code that utilizes them. Next up, Facad. Facad is a structural design pattern that simplifies complex libraries, frameworks, and class interfaces. When you require a simple but limited interface to a complicated subsystem, we use the facade pattern. At last, proxy pattern. Proxy is a structural design pattern that enables you to substitute an item. A proxy control access to a source object allowing you to do actions before or after the request. Next up is a behavioral design pattern. The behavioral design pattern deals with communication between classes and objects. That means if you want to change the behavior of a class and again you want it to affect other classes of the project as well. We have 10 types of design patterns available in this. Chain of responsibility, iterator, memento, state, template method, command, mediator, observer, strategy and visitor. Let's discuss them in detail. First up, the chain of responsibility. A behavioral design pattern called the chain of responsibility allows you to pass requests along the chain of handlers. When a request is received, each handler determines whether to process it or send it to the next handler in the chain. Next up, iterator. Iterator is a behavioral design pattern that allows you to traverse components of a collection without revealing the representation below, that is list, stack, tree, etc. Iterators can be used to traverse composite trees. Next up is Memento. Memento is a behavioral design pattern that saves and restores an object's prior state without revealing its implementation. When you need to take pictures of an object's state in order to restore it, to a previous state, we use memento pattern. Next up, state pattern. State is a behavioral design pattern that allows an entity to change its behavior in response to the changes in its internal state. It appears that the object's class has changed. Then, the template pattern. Template method is a behavioral design that lets subclasses alter steps of an algorithm without changing its structure. We use the template method to allow customers to extend specific types of an algorithm, not the entire method or its structure. Then we have command pattern. Command is a behavioral design pattern that turns a request into a standalone object. This transformation supports unachievable operations and passing request as method argument. After that, mediator. Mediator is a behavioral design pattern that reduces object dependency to collaborate. The objects must first communicate to a mediator object. Next up is observer pattern. Observer is a behavioral design pattern that allows you to establish a subscription mechanism to alert numerous objects about an event that occurred to the item being observed. When some objects in your app must monitor others for a limited time or in specific circumstances, we use this pattern. Next up, strategy pattern. Strategy is a behavioral design pattern that allows you to construct a family of algorithms, classify them and make them object interchangeable. When you have a bunch of similar classes that just differ in how they perform some behavior, then we use the strategy pattern. At last, visitor. The visitor pattern is a behavioral design pattern that allows you to decouple algorithms from the objects they act on. When you need to perform an operation on all elements of a complicated object structure, we use the visitor. Finally, let's conclude this tutorial with some advantages of design patterns. First up, abstract factory classes. 
are frequently based on set of factory methods although the method on these classes can also be composed using prototype. Next up, to reduce RAM, we can use flyweights to construct shared composite tree leaf nodes. Finally, you can treat a visitor as a powerful version of the command pattern. Its objects can execute operation over various objects of different classes. And this was all for today's session. Hope you guys found it informative and helpful. If you like this session, then like, share and subscribe. If you have any question, then you can drop them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.